Hello, and welcome back to another pen talk. We're going to talk about things that aren't great. And, you know, I love the MBBS 456, but this one, hopefully you can see that little green tinge there in those threads. I put this ink in the pen. It took me a lot of effort to get it to write somewhat acceptable but since then it's been hard starting and now it won't write at all no matter what I do so I'm just going to break it down empty out the ink put it back in the bottle some ink and pen combos just don't work and then I got to figure out what other ink I want to put in here I disassembled the 456 to actually clean it thoroughly you know, no matter what I did, I couldn't get all the ink out of the barrel without removing the piston or the plunger, whatever you want to call it. And there is that edge there, and it's actually 17 64ths. And I actually thought I had a 17 64th wrench, but all I could find was 13 64ths. So I used the trusty universal wrench, and it worked pretty well. Um, nice seeing those two O rings there at the bottom. So when I put it back together again, I'm going to grease everything here, grease this rod, you know, with silicone. Just put a little bit of water in the cap. Looks like it took all the color that had seeped in those threads, so that's nice. You know, the nib and feed and nib assembly and everything else all came apart relatively easily. What's really nice is how clear and transparent this resin is that they use. One of the terms they use is calling it glass and it definitely does look like glass. So, so we're going to reassemble it. I'm going to think up of an ink to put in there. So I have other four or five sixes and they all write first time every time. I don't have any issues. If I write a number of pages without undoing the blind cap, it, it'll run out. The section will run out, but I'll undo the black cap. And, you know, uh, 10 or 20 seconds later, ink is flowing again, fine. I generally try to undo the blind cap whenever I'm doing any writing, just uh, because it's frustrating when it runs out of ink. But this one had an issue with the ink and the pen. And now we're going to try a different ink just to validate that everything is okay. I made a statement that the wrench that you need is 17 64ths, and you may ask, how do I know that? Well, being an engineer, you need tools, and this is my current tool of choice. Heavy duty, very accurate calipers that give you a reading in both millimeters and fractionals. So the actual dimension of the nut at the back of the pen to take apart the piston is 6.77 millimeters. So that doesn't equate to any standard metric size, but if you press the little button, it immediately converts to 17 64ths. You may ask, doesn't the Twisby wrench fit? No, it does not. That opening is seven millimeters, which fits Pelican and Twisby. Which begs to ask a question, why does a Chinese pen have an English sized measurement to take it apart? That's a question that we could ponder and I don't know the answer. But at the end of the day, thankfully, taking this in and out, unscrewing it in and out is a pretty easy thing to do. The adjustable wrench worked fine. It takes a little bit of effort for that initial turn, but once you get it started, it'll basically almost unturn by hand. And then when you reseat it, it turns in really, really easily. And then that last quarter turn just sets it in place. So it's very well designed, very well machined. And again, it's a great pen. I did more checking and uh, ignition wrenches usually only go to 15 64ths. So my search for a 17 64th inch wrench in my ignition wrench set was never going to bear fruit. 
My silicone grease threads O-rings assembled the 456 and this time when I filled it I used my Twisby vac filler apparatus. So um, I filled this with ink, put the nib in here, inverted it, did my first plunger and got about a, a little less than a half fill which I thought was not what I expected so I pulled the plunger back down so it was uh, level with the ink and pushed it back up again and I ended up with this fill which I'm very happy with. So I would say that's about as full as you're going to get this type of vac filler. And you may say, Chris, interesting color of ink. And I say, yes. So I know I have too much ink. We all have too much ink. But that doesn't stop us from getting more ink. I saw this on Birmingham Pen website. Uh, this is the ink that I used in this pen. And this is what it is. Limousine Alpha Centauri. Yes, it's a purple. Here's the chromatography, which I think is pretty impressive. It looks like it has uh, some permanence there in that black strip where I applied the ink to this filter paper. But that's just a nice purple. And I think the purple shows out dark on this card because of that black element in it. But what really blew my mind is because I've never had Nemo seen ink before is this is a phenomenal bottle. Heavy duty glass, 35 milliliters. I'm impressed. And the other thing that I didn't realize is this comes in this little cardboard box and it's made in Sylvania, bottled in USA. So that would be great, but there's more. This ink cost me $5.99 for the bottle. That is a bargain in any person's viewpoint. And you can buy it on the Nemocene website. I don't know whether it's still available on Birmingham, Birmingham pens. But dude, do that. Do, go for it. It's great. I also got Solar Flare, which is a nice red. And like this purple and like the red, they have some interesting attributes to them. And when I wrote with this 456, with this Nemocene ink in it, I'm very, very pleased and happy. It certainly doesn't exhibit any of the characteristics that I had with the Pen BBS ink. So those of you that have watched some of my previous videos, and especially towards the latter part of 2018, I was just a very happy with this 456 pen from Pen BBS. Primarily because it just feels great in the hand. It looks great. It certainly can hold a ton of ink. Uh, I think they just hit it out of the ballpark with this model. And it feels good in the hand because that's really the true test of a pen yeah, as your standard a little bit over one and a half turns to take off the cap the section just feels good a little flare out at the end the you don't feel these threads hardly at all you notice that, that they're metal but that's about it and I love the way the ink looks in that section so this is just a great pen and obviously if you're going to write for long periods of time you will take out this, uh, unscrew the blind cap, and that's going to remove the little rubber end to that piston that seals the section off. So if you're going to go on an airplane, you would tighten it down, which reminds me of a watch experience that I had. I got a Tag Hui Air watch uh, as a gift. I went to Hawaii, went diving with it, and uh, the next day the watch was like full of water and all not working. 
So needless to say, I was not happy with that, but I realized that I didn't screw down the crown, which is what you need to do, because I had opened it up to change the time for Hawaii and never screwed it back in again, so therefore it wasn't watertight. So this is a kind of the opposite thing. You need to unscrew it to get the thing to work properly if you're going to use a lot of ink. The other thing about the 456 is it posts well. And sometimes you need to have a place to put the cap and putting it on the back end of the pen is probably the most logical place to put it. You'll certainly know where it is. So that's that's how it is. So again, this pen to me still is kudos. I know the 355 with the draw filler is such a cooler design, but I have my reservations about it, and I do think this is a better pen. There's a lot more metal in this pen. I think this pen is going to last a very long period of time. And as you can see, there's a ton of ink in there. I mean, I love this. This really works well. And as a purple ink, I think this is as good as any. And this nib is just super smooth. It requires no effort to write. This is a now an everyday writer, and, and I really I can't explain why I had so many issues with the pen BBS ink. I've, I have it in some other pens, and it works okay, but you know, those that you follow Wasky Squirrel know that sometimes if you put one ink in one pen, it's just a bad combo. And being an engineer, I should be able to figure this out, but I can't. But being a lover of writing, it doesn't matter as long as you come up with something that works. So I'm very, very happy that I was able to put a new ink in this pen and bring the pen back to now an everyday carry, which is what I expected it to be. So um, we've come to the end of this video, so thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. This has added to your knowledge of pens and inks and other things. May you have many great writing experiences explore this phenomenal world that we have an opportunity to enjoy. So this is now the end. Have a wonderful ink and paper experience. Until the next video, bye for now. I really love this ink now in this pen.